So ever since we uploaded our Efteling review and Efteling vlog, everyone's been asking us, where is your Efteling top 10 rides? So I'm not classing Fairy Tale Forest as an attraction for the purpose of this top 10, because let's face it, Efteling is the Fairy Tale Forest. So number 10 is a Villa Volta, and this is a Vekoma Madhouse that was originally opened up in 1996, and in fact it's the first ever Vekoma Madhouse to ever exist. Very different to the other Madhouse I've done, because the other Vekoma Madhouse I've done, such as Hex at Orton Towers, and The Haunting at Drayton Manor, and even the one at One Wallaby Holland, they have like a very, very dark theme, and even though this has a dark theme, the chamber itself is it's very kind of light and ornate, and I think it really stands out. I think the only negative I had about Villa Volta when I first did it was not being a Dutch speaker, I can't understand understand Dutch because I didn't understand the story. Uh, Vekoma Madhouse is really reliant on their pre-shows and that, that's no fault of the ride itself. That's how communication works. <laughs> But once I understood the story about the book riders or the goat riders and how you're going into the leader of the goat riders house and he's cursed, it made a lot more sense, obviously. And it's a little bit like Hex at Orton Towers, how its storyline is based around local legends. I really like when a ride incorporates its locality and tells like, a, you know, a, a, whether it's a myth or folklore, brings the ride to life. So number nine is Stoom Train or the Efteling Steam Train Company. This was originally opened up in 1968 and it actually is a proper, proper steam trains that take you around the park and it's a beautiful way to see this stunning park. It has three working steam trains, the oldest being built in 1908, I believe, I think that's right. But how amazing is that? And it really adds to the magic of the park when you're going around on an, on, you know, an old steam train and you can smell the steam and you can see all the views. It's honestly an amazing ride and it wouldn't be an effing trip without going on the steam train. Number eight is Python, and this is a double loop corkscrew steel coaster that was manufactured by Vekoma. It was originally opened up in 1981, and this is a stunning coaster to see off-ride. It really is, and I did it in 2019, so this was the new version. So basically, in 2017, they scrapped the ride except for the station and the lift hill, I believe, and completely rebuilt the whole track. It's, it's the same layout, but just reprofiled to make it run a bit smoother. I think the first year I went there, we did it like four times in a day because it was a really quiet day and we had lo lots of fun on it. It's really, really good. The only reason it's so low on the list um, is the fact that the theming compared to the rest of the park is like not the standard, but the fact that this is was their like first official big coaster, um, which you can kind of forgive it. And I'm so glad that they actually decided to just retrack the coaster rather than just get rid of it because it's a part of Efteling history. It sounds so proud in the Rurik Rick area. Sorry for my pronunciation, it's probably awful. I do apologize to you Dutch speakers. <laughs> So number seven is Fata Morgana. It feels so wrong putting this at number seven, but I think it's just a testament of how good that park is that I, I ride as good as Fata Morgana can be like number seven on the list, it's, it's mad. So Fata Morgana is a dark ride towboat made by Intamin. It was originally opened up in 1986. The closest ride I could compare it to is Pirates of the Caribbean, but in my opinion, Fata Morgana is so much better than Pirates of the Caribbean. I just, I feel like it's just so visually stimulating. Everywhere you look, there's just something to see. The ride itself is based on 1001 Arabian Nights and it takes you through different scenes like the poor sector and the treasure chamber. Treasure chamber, I think that's what it's called. That is my favorite part. Basically, it's a room that kind of tilts the walls, a bit like a madhouse, but it doesn't go like upside down, but it kind of goes like this. And it really, like really, really shocked me when it first happened. So I was like, it was disorientating me. I was like, what is going on? But it is so impressive. And I just love that whole area that Fat Morgana lives within with the square outside and the bazaar shop. It's, it's so nice and it's a perfect place for it to go. And you can see it across the lake when you first walk into Efteling as well. So number six is Dream Fluke or Dream Flight. And this ride opened up in 1993 and it was one of the biggest investments at the time that Efteling had ever made. I think it was the start of Efteling starting to be really, really ambitious and kind of like the gateway to where they are now with how big they go with their newer, newer attractions. Even though I'd never done this ride before, there was something nostalgic in it and I don't know how Efteling do this type of magic. It's witchcraft, I swear. So if you've ever been on any type of Omnimover, 
dark rides such as Haunted Mansion, Phantom Manor. It's basically like that, but the track is above you and it makes it so much better because you feel like you're just gliding and flying through all these different scenes and such as like a castle realm, a forest fairy garden. The end of this ride is a huge helix and you're kind of up in the, the top of the trees and you're going around this huge helix which actually gets pretty intense at some points. My personal favorite scene is the heavenly stronghold, I think it's called where it almost looks like castles in space. It's absolutely stunning. And then you go through this tunnel where you've got all stars above you and things like that. It really transports you to where they want you to be. And something that really stands out about this ride in general is the smells inside it, especially the fairy garden. Um, it's kind of like uh, potpourri smells and things like that. It's just, it's, it's amazing. It really, really is good. So number five is Baron 1898. So this is a dive coaster of a 120 foot drop into a steamy hole. It's manufactured by Bollinger and Mabillard and it was opened up in 2015. It's probably the most beautifully themed coaster that I've ever seen in my life. Honestly, approaching Baron is something else. It really takes your breath away. Well, it, well, it did for me, but I might just be a bit sad. <laughs> so coaster wise, the standout moment is obviously going down that drop into the Immelman is a fantastic feeling. It really, really is. But the rest of the coaster, it's okay. It's nothing amazing. I think there's better coasters within Efteling, but the theming, the theming is something else. As you approach Baron, you see this huge mine structure and that's what the actual drop goes down. And the music again is awesome. Really gets you in the mood, especially when you're outside. It's like, dip, dip, dip. When you enter the building, you're taking on the part of some uh, local villagers that have been recruited by Baron Gustav to go down his haunted mine, basically. It's haunted by the white women. They've put a curse on his mine. They don't want anyone mining any of the treasures out of it. And you're taking on part of the employees to go into the mine. It's an amazing pre-show followed by a cool animatronic of the Baron himself. And then you get onto the actual trains themselves or the mine carts you go through the set of doors and then you're treated to another pre-show with the white ladies who come out it's like an awesome projection show you can hear this like really iconic song they're singing you go up the lift hill and when you're face down and looking at that drop and all the steam is coming out of it you can hear like a faint distant singing of the white ladies and then you plunge straight into it into that moment and it's an awesome awesome experience so number four is Symbolica. Now this is a trackless dark ride and it was opened up in 2017 and it is to date the most expensive attraction that Efteling have ever made. And it's easy to see why as you approach the castle, as you're walking up the main promenade of Efteling, you see this huge building. The whole story behind Symbolica is you're going into the castle, the Courts of Hearts, to have a banquet with King Bardolphus. I think that's right. But as you're in the foyer, the court jester, Pardus, interrupts and he takes you on his own little magical ride through the secret passages and secret parts of the castle that you're not meant to see. And it goes a little bit magical and then things start to go wrong. You have three different journeys you can go on, which is the hero tour, the treasure tour and the music tour whichever one you choose you'll get a slightly different ride experience i personally really like the treasure tour because i like the path when you go inside the treasure room um, it looks like you're inside a diamond i love the whole score i love the fact that there's a diorama in there as well which harks back to efteling's past for me being in like an outsider to efteling to experience this for the first time i just feel like this ride brings everything in efteling together it kind of for me it kind of bridges the gap between the old and the new of Efteling. And I think it really, really works well. So number three is Joris and Drek or George and the Dragon. Now this is a fantastic GCI wooden dueling coaster. It's an amazing ride, honestly. It's right next to Python, opposite Flying Dutchman. And the views you get on this, if you get on this on a sunny day, it is absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, it's all based around George and the Dragon, about George slaying the dragon. Um, there's a huge dragon statue that apparently breathes fire. I've never seen it uh, breathe fire. Maybe it's not working these days, but it's still very cool to see it and to go and to like speed past it when you're on, on ride. There's two different sides you can choose, which is fire and water. I personally haven't got a favorite side. I know a lot of people do. What's your favorite side? Comment it below now. What's really cool about this ride is that when you finish on the finish line, 
is that whoever wins in the station, banners come down, you get cheering if you lose, you get booze, and it really just adds to that whole dueling element to it. And I think more like dueling coasters need that style of interaction. It really, really does make that ride. So number two is Vogel Rock. This is the best indoor coaster I think I've ever done in my life. It's incredible. Manufactured by Fakoma and it was opened up in 1998. Like Fata Morgana, it's based on 1001 Arabian Nights um, and it's about the, the massive bird in that which is called Rock. Um, and as you go through that amazing entrance, that facade of like, I think it, at one point it was like the biggest bird in Europe or something, bird statue in Europe, but it's incredible. Birds flying past above you, you're seeing lasers going off, um, you got the wind rushing past you, um, the onboard audio is incredible. That's done by Wood Boss. It's for me, it, that's what makes that ride, especially at the end when you're on that brake run. And it's like, ba ba da ba 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 da ba. I love everything about Vogel Rock. And you know what? I just cannot wait to get back to do it. I need to go back and do it. Please, Vogel Rock, please. So next up is the Flickenden Hollander. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Flying Dutchman. This is an incredible water coaster. Now, I regard this more as a dark ride than a coaster. I, for me, I feel like the coaster uh, is like a, just an amazing finale to an amazing dark ride. Now, this ride was opened up in 2007, and from start to finish, from as soon as you enter the house into the queue line, um, it's just incredible. So the whole thing about this ride is that it's about, you know, the very famous story of the Flying Dutchman. It's about um, Captain Willem van Decken. He ended up sailing with his crew uh, on Easter Sunday when it wasn't allowed into high winds. And then they end up going into a storm and then sailing for eternity. People have reported seeing the Flying Dutchman, this kind of ghost ship. So as you enter, you're going into the captain's house it's kind of abandoned and you go through this portrait and then you go through this like secret tunnel it's the it's got to be the most beautiful queue line i've ever seen in my life you've got these portraits that actually like move um and then like i say when you're going through that secret passageway there's like lights going off through the ceiling boards up above you and then the secret passage leads into a tavern and then you can look out the windows of the tavern and see the the loading station and it's designed to be like outside and it's like a kind of a village um, or houses, facades, and honestly, it's one of the best loading stations I've ever been to. Honestly, you can tell how much I love this ride. It's one of my favourite dark rides I've ever, ever done. Um, I'd say it's second to like Rise of Resistance. I think the, the beauty of this ride is its simplicity. I think because when you're going through um, all the scenes, it's very, very dark. You've got just a lantern at the front of your boat. You've got all kind of all the fog that's around you and you're kind of like what's happening and the whole audio production really puts you on the edge of your seat and then you see kind of this holographic uh, vision of the flying dutchman and then you end up going up into a lift and then like i say you come out into the coaster bit which is just an awesome awesome ending to like just this incredible ride you know me explaining it won't do any justice to it you can't see any good POVs, you've just got to go and experience for yourself. It is honestly such a special ride. And like I say, it's one of my favorite rides, one of my favorite experiences I've ever, ever done. And the reason it's number one is because if I went to Efteling and the Flying Dutchman wasn't open, I'd be absolutely good. I'd feel like my day isn't complete. And yeah, that I just love this ride so much. And the score by Rennie Merkelback as well is again, just out of this world. All the audio in Efteling is amazing. And that's because, you know, Efteling do it in house, you know, that they're obviously high composers and they use orchestras, but it's so much more, it's so effective when you have an, a live orchestra recording of a song and it just makes it so feel so cinematic, so theatrical. So yeah, that's my top 10. Just because your favorite ride didn't make it onto this list does not mean I don't like it. There's nothing about Efteling I don't like. I love all the attractions. You know, I love Spook Slot. I love the Pagoda. I love Maxima Ritz. You know, Piranha, for me, is the best rapids I've ever done. But I think it just it's a testament to how good Efteling is that I couldn't even fit my favorite rides into this list. Thank you so much for watching this. Please let me know what is your top 10. I'm so curious to know what your top 10 is, especially if you're from the Netherlands and you grew up with Efteling. I'd love to know. If you like this video, please, please subscribe. It helps the channel so much. Like the video. There's loads more videos on the channel if you want to check it out. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. So see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.